Temperature will be 67 at noon with a high of 73 at up around 3 o'clock. Winds starting in the south-southeast, shifting south-southwest 5 to 7, zero precipitation. RH is going to have a low at 3 o'clock at 33%. Looks like uh, fire weather is going to cooperate with us and, and we hopefully have a good burn. We've got a, just a really good mixture of crews out here from all over from the EPA, Forest Service, and several universities. And they all are putting out a lot of research equipment to measure smoke, to do some physics modeling, some fire physics modeling. We're hoping to kind of link together with some of our uh, our vegetation monitoring as well to, to sort of uh, be able to understand how fuels burn, where those fuels will then go up into the atmosphere, and then also what fire effects will occur from these from the burn. So as part of the prescribed fire research, we're really interested in, um, in, in emissions and smoke. And uh, in addition, we're interested in, in the carbon cycle. Um, prescribed fire is often linked to uh, generating CO2, generating methane, generating carbon monoxide, and um, there are lots of ways to estimate that. So we use drones that fly fly through columns. We use uh, you know, a host of equations that transfer vegetation into its the smoke products, and we can also use flux towers like the one behind us here at, on our property uh, that help us get at, at carbon exchange both during the fire, but also in that period where the fire where vegetation recovers following fire, which gives us a longitudinal look at not just the emissions that take place, but also that rapid regrowth that takes place following fire. I am Dr. Brian Gallette. I'm with the EPA's Office of Research and Development, and we're here at Tall Timbers to conduct research uh, sponsored primarily by the Department of Defense uh, Strategic Environmental Research and Development Program, as well as our own EPA office, Office of Research and Development. And so we are actually flying uh, emission sensors. We are ca calculating the uh, concentrations of air pollutants, uh, both particulate matter and uh, carbon dioxide, CO, NOx, um, a lot of other species also. Uh, we're going to use different platforms to do that. We're using a, a fixed platform that's on the flux tower in the middle of the unit. We're also putting a smaller, lightweight unit on, on one of these unmanned aerial systems or drones. And behind me, we also have a unmanned ground vehicle that contains another unit that we're going to drive into the smoke to sample emissions. My laboratory is called the Airborne Systems Testing and Environmental Research Lab. We specialize in using unmanned systems to put sensors in challenging environments, and sometimes we build our own sensors. So what you'll see us here doing today is uh, flying a couple of these examples of custom sensors into the smoke above fire or over fire to get some idea of what it's doing. So we'll be observing the fire behavior and we'll be sampling the emissions. Another example of what we'll be doing is pyroaerobiology, understanding more about the life that's found in smoke plumes. And our colleague, Dr. Lita Kobziar of the University of Idaho is leading that portion of the study. We're collaborating with her by taking her science instruments over the fire and collecting some smoke samples. I am here sampling the microbes that live and are transported in smoke. So what we do is we attach samplers that are attached to a vacuum pump and we fly those on a drone into the smoke plume. The air gets pulled through those filters and anything that is of microscopic size is deposited onto those filters. Then we land, we take the filters, into this portable lab, a portable glove box to keep everything sterile, and insert those into a solution that protects the DNA. And then eventually we send those to a lab to get analyzed and sequenced, and then we can determine what the composition of microbial life is that we find in the smoke. We've learned recently that what smoke does is put up a huge number of uh, different types of microbes, much higher diversity, and much, much higher concentration than what we would see in ambient conditions. So this is called a firebox. We have an aluminum square here with thermocouples inside of it that's going to be pointing down. And as the fire comes by, it can measure heat flux. Um, but what we do that's a little bit different with it is we also have a camera set off to the side. So instead of just getting 
you know, temperature readings for some random spot in a field, we can see where it is. And then also because of the camera's recording, see the flame dynamics and kind of see what the relationship is and the interaction between that and what the thermocouples read. The center started in 1998. It was developed to give fire practitioners experience in learning how to build a prescribed fire program or to manage a prescribed fire program and additionally how to just go about putting fire on the ground to meet multiple different types of objectives. Our students have the opportunity to burn with numerous different cooperators. How fire is put on the ground varies dramatically, the different types of techniques they'll use and so we're, we're working to get people who are showing up, which could be to work on a fire effects monitor, an engine boss, a firing boss, a burn boss, to get that experience so that they can build confidence and competence and take that back to their home unit to do their work. Later in the burn, about an hour, all the stuff behind me is gonna be on fire, so you'll be able to see fire if you don't wanna hike. You'll still be very close to it, but if you do wanna hike right now, be ready to walk and we'll, uh, we'll take Watch you up to the initial uh, subunit.